All right, now what we're going to do is talk about business. Before I describe some terms in business, I want to tell you I have no education in business. I've learned it all around venture capitalists. Um, my dad taught me mechanical engineering, all engineering, and then my education in college was all engineering. So this is all, this is all from the street. From I learned it on the fly, and it's it's uh, difficult to learn as it's going by at 90 miles an hour. So, uh, but one of the things that's nice is my ex-wife and I, having started companies right out of school, eventually took a company public on the Nasdaq, and so I've I've seen the entire gamut of of business numbers, and I'll try to give you the way in which I learned them as time went by. So um, to start, all I knew, all I knew about business was that there were two terms called profit and loss. That's all I knew, and um, I even somewhat knew from a, I watched an accounting class, or maybe my mom told me because she knew accounting, that losses were. Um, you put parentheses around them. So they show up um, in reports with parentheses. So losses got a parenthesis, profits got a hundred. So in this case, this company, if you add it together, they might be making $10. $10. So you have to develop a whole new set of words that are intermediate words before you use this word profit. It's not immediate that that this occurs. So let's take the let's take this company that um, four of us started right out of college and we made a product called Mach 2 which that's a completely irrelevant what it's called but it's a software product and we sold it for a hundred dollars and the thing that's really cool about it is that it was software so all we had to do is make a manual and a disc and they don't cost much manuals and discs so um, that costs about fifteen dollars and so that means that for everyone sold after we paid our for our manual and disc we made $85. Now once again, as a beginning businessman, I would have put the word profit there, but you don't. So this one here, well, this thing here is called your average selling price, ASP, your average selling price. And in business, what you're doing is you're, try, you're trying to loop, loop, loop together all of your products and then you want to see what on average they all sell for. So that's ASP. What's your ASP? This is a very powerful word in the sales business because they're always wanting, they want to drop the sale price so they can sell more units and the company needs to push on them and say, no, keep those ASPs high. Keep pushing the price of our products up. So this is a, this is a real struggle in companies because as we know, when you drop prices, volume increases, but then you make less. Well, this is margin right here. So we're going to have a new word here called margin not profit. We're not going to use that word profit yet. And then this one is called cost of goods. And it's never, you never say the word cog, cost of goods. So what does it cost to make your widget? What does the thing sell at? Average selling price and therefore this minus this, actually we can minus, we might as well do it. There you go. That would be an accounting, 100 15 and then 85 and this is margin now this is a software companies are fantastic because they all you have to do is make a disc and a manual they don't cost much so whereas you if you're building a car you might have a different structure maybe you're buying let's say you have a Honda Accord at 20,000 and then it costs you $10,000 to make it so you then have ten thousand dollars in margin. So your ASP is twenty thousand, your cost of goods is ten thousand, and your margin is um, ten thousand dollars. And now the next calculation we do is we take this eighty-five number. Let's let's make sure I well okay eighty-five number and divide it by your average selling price ASP margin. Now don't don't try to remember this. Just say for every dollar we sell, what how much do we make in, in margin? Don't say the word profit. How much do we make in margin? So this would have a 85% gross margin, GM, gross margin. And this guy over here 
would be 10,000 over 20,000. So we're taking the we're taking the cost and dividing it, or the, pro, the margin dividing it by the the average selling price, and this guy would have 50% gross margins. Now, car companies would kill to have 50% gross margins. They don't. They're not nearly that high. So we should probably do more what a car company does, and say. A car company is so it's so competitive that the gross margins in a car company would be very thin. They're, well, when something when you don't make a lot of money per sale, it's called thin, very low gross margins. Nobody on Wall Street likes low gross margin businesses unless you have monster volume, like Walmart. They can live very thin. Their gross margins in their company can be very small, but they just move so much. So very rarely do low numbers are treated well on Wall Street. Take Google, for example. They don't make, I mean, behind the scenes they do amazing work, but they don't ship anything. It's all, it's all just a, an ad word on the site. So they can have gross margins like here in the 85s or 90s, just like Microsoft. So everybody in the world wants this. You have to have big numbers here. You have to have big numbers here and you want these, these numbers to be going up, you want these numbers to be going up, and then there's another thing called uh, total volume. So what, when you do this, you're gonna multiply how many widgets times their average price, and then you get the how much is selling in total. But right from the beginning, we have to introduce two new words, margin and gross margin. And you absolutely, when we were running our modem business, we were super lucky because we were getting 55% gross margins. And we were, this was a, an amazing number for a hardware company. Because if you remember, we were talking about software companies which don't have to make very, their product, their, their cost of goods is very low. Here was a case where we had a modem company with very, uh, very nice software and we were pulling in 55% margins. And when you have these big numbers, you get what's called a lot of profit to the bottom line, which we'll do just in a second. But you really want big numbers, low numbers, or some companies run at like 5% gross margins. And they are so close to going out of business because they're, they're running right to the edge. They only make five bucks for every hundred they, every hundred they sell. These are very precarious companies um, usually when something's happening in the industry, like somebody, the price is just dropping, like let's say Ethernet cards, maybe they started off at like a couple hundred bucks, and now they're down to like $10. You get some um, foreign competition, usually from Taiwan or China, and they just blow the price out of the bottom, and all the people that are in the U.S., like modem business eventually got to the point where you could buy a full modem for $10, just like these Ethernet cards. And so competitors from abroad just, you cannot fathom how they run their business. They, it's, just a, it's just a manufacturing and shipping operation, and there's no, there's no engineering, there's no marketing, there's no sales, nothing. Just make the stuff in huge volume and just ship it like crazy at such a low price. And this stuff, this, these people that can do this, absolutely knock these guys out of the water. They just... Poof, we would have no chance against a low cost, high volume manufacturer. It would just it'd blow us up. We, I'll show you in a second how this number is so key to an income statement, which is the next thing we're gonna do. So anyhow, if you're gonna do business, you gotta be able to name drop gross margins. Just bam, gross margin, gross margin, gross margin. You don't really even talk much about this. This is just an intermediate calculation. So it's, what is your gross margin? That's pivotal to all discussions about a particular business. So, um, first talk in a series of business talks. Hope you liked it. Um, I'll go on to income statements next. Thanks.